We are reviving the Pontiac GTO, also known as the Holden Monaro and also known as the Vauxhall Monaro and the Chevy Lumina SS. However, in this video, we're going to focus on the Pontiac GTO. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the bump front bumper from a Camaro, apply it onto the 2005 Pontiac GTO. I'm gonna take a redesigned version of the new Integra headlights, and then I'm gonna take the charger hood and the charger wheels and apply it onto these proportions of the 2005 GTO. It's gonna be a little bit of a uh, Frankenstein design, but don't worry, I'm gonna make it work. Let's have a look at the Pontiac GTO. This is the 2004 model. So when this was launched, when this came out in 2004 here in the US, the Americans thought that it looked pretty bland and pretty boring. The words they used to describe it was anonymous and conservative, but maybe they missed the point of it being timeless at the same time at least that's my opinion i think this is a timeless design these proportions why well, remember when i was in australia traveling around backpacking through australia back in the day and i saw the holden monaros and i thought they looked so good and i still think they look fantastic today so this is the pontiac gto the 2004 model i love this styling it's such a clean design of a proper rear wheel drive coupe two-door coupe front engine you could even have it with a manual transmission and a ls1 v8 for the 2004 model zero to 60 about 5.3 seconds and that was not bad for uh, a 2004 sports model and in 2005 i'm going to show you the comparison between the 2004 what changed in 2005 not just the exterior design something happened under the hood there as well which i'm going to pop in right here in just a second but let's have a look at this design we have some clean lines and clean proportions a typical two-door coupe greenhouse right here going into a nicely shaped hood with some simple graphics all over the place and it was even featured in one of my favorite games of all time need for speed hot pursuit 2 with the holden or hsv as it was called hsv monaro so many good memories from that game and i love the rear view i think this is the the best view of this car i love the simplicity of this design it looks almost refreshing today because this was right before everybody went into the overstyled era of car design this has a little bit of some melted cheese in there but it's still a very distinctive design and i think this this is so clean that it's creating its own identity for the car i think this could look good these proportions if we just updated some of the graphics that's exactly what i'm going to do later with the redesign so let's pop in the 2005 model so what happened here is that we now go from an LS1 engine to an LS2 with 400 horsepower, 0 to 60, around 4.8 seconds now, so it dropped by almost half a second. Americans were complaining about this 2004. They thought that this looked so boring. They didn't understand what it was, and they thought it looked dated already when it came out because the Holden Monaro in Australia had been on sale since 2001. So when it came out in 2004, Americans thought it looked a little boring. So what they did for the 2005 model year here, as you can see, we ha now have the Holden air intakes in the front end, which I think looks super cool and a lot better than the cleaned up 2004 model. We also have in the rear end, and this is a big change down here. We have a nice diffuser down here, which was completely lacking in the 2004 model. And now we have the two bazooka tailpipes on each side symmetrical. We still had dual pipes on the 2004 model but they were all positioned they were both positioned on the driver's side and now for the 2005 model as you can see with the six liter ls2 engine we now got two exhaust pipes symmetrically positioned in each corner which i think looks so much better than the 2004 not just the exhaust but also the diffuser in there so let's have a look at the redesign that we're going to make here this is the car i'm going to be working on as you can see it's a pontiac gto you have the logo right there and you also have the gto specific pontiac front end that separates it from the chevy lumina ss and the holden monaro as well i do like these wheels so i believe these are 18 inch wheels but obviously they need to be a lot bigger if you're going to make a modern sports car and as i said right here i'm going to pop in the chevy Corvette SS front and bumper. I'm gonna pop in some Acura Integra headlights right here, redesign them a little bit. I'm gonna throw in the wheels from the Dodge, I think it's the Dodge Charger uh, Scat Pack or the Hellcat, I can't remember which one it is, and also the Hellcat hood 
from the Dodge Charger. I think that's gonna look really cool on this design. So with that said, let's continue in Photoshop and let's see how this beast is going to turn out. So a little backstory of how the uh, Pontiac GTO was actually revived in 2004. And that's all thanks to the GM North America chairman, Bob Lutz of the time. He read in Car and Driver magazine in uh, Australia, a review of the holding Commodore SS. And in that article, car and driver said that this was the best car the GM had to offer at the time, but they were confused as to why it couldn't be sold in the, or it wasn't sold in the US. And that got Bob Lutz thinking that he wanted to reintroduce the Holden Monaro as the new Pontiac GTO in the US, but it took two years. And that's the reason why when it was introduced here in the US, Americans thought that it was already a dated looking design. It didn't look like anything specific, specifically the 2004 model that was so sleek. It didn't have the hood scoops like the 2005. It also didn't have the dual bazooka tailpipes with the diffuser in the rear. So it looks pretty boring. I can see why they thought that in 2004. And some of the changes from the Australian Monaro included a new Pontiac DNA front fascia, new badging obviously, the seats had GTO stitched in the front seats and a different exhaust system that the engineers of the Pontiac or GM at the time, they wanted to make it sound as close as possible to the original 1964 GTO without breaking any rules and regulations of 2004. The original Holden Monaro was designed and introduced in 2001 and it sold really well in Australia. However, here they had very difficult they had a very difficult time selling the Pontiac GTO specifically for the 2004 model since Americans thought it was too conservative and anonymous and didn't have any significant relation to previous GTO. So, of the 15,728 imported cars in 2004, they managed to sell 13,569. However, they were they had to offer a massive discount in order to sell these cars. Another reason why it was really hard to sell this uh, the, the 2004 Pontiac GTO was because they were planning to sell this car for $25,000, but due to the Australian dollar's growth against the US dollar, the price of the car had ended up being well over $34,000, so oh, close to $10,000 more than initially planned. In 2005 though, something really cool and necessary happened to the Pontiac GTO because as I showed you, they got, it got brand new styling cues and graphic features such as the intakes in the hood and of course the diffuser in the back with the dual pipes. But it also got the new LS2 6 liter engine with 400 horsepower which dropped the 0 to 60 time to 4.8 seconds and the quarter mile sprint was done in 13.3 seconds. The last Pontiac GTO came off the assembly line in Australia on June 14th, 2006, with a total production number for all three years ending at 40,808 cars. Now let's have a look at the redesign here and let's see what's going on here. So as I said earlier in the video, I think these proportions are timeless. Some might call them conservative or anonymous, but I, <laughs> I like to call them timeless because it is a clear two-door front engine rear wheel drive proportions. You can tell that it is that just by looking at the proportions. So that's not something I want to mess about with. I do want to work a little bit on the greenhouse because the greenhouse in the origin, in the 2004 and five and six um, GTO, it has this down curvature in the greenhouse where the window meets the body and that makes it look dated. You can tell that the car was done in that era by just looking at that line. So I want to have that be horizontal to the ground almost and sharpen that up and also of course work with these new graphics that I'm implementing here in this uh, redesign. For example, the Camaro SS front bumper which I think would suit this a new Pontiac GTO perfectly and also work on the identity of the front fascia by taking in and importing some uh, uh, Acura Integra headlights and remolding them to fit this new styling. I'm also gonna take the later, latest generation Pontiac GTO uh, kidneys in the front end. I would call them kidneys because they look like, <laughs> like a BMW front end with these uh, Pontiac grills. And last but not least, the wheels and the hood from the Charger Hellcat. All together, we need to make everything tie in together. So we need to work on the sharpness of the graphic features to make them look like they, are, they belong to the same car. And I think the end result 
Vault looks really cool. It would be fantastic to see Pontiac come back and create a GTO that looks something like this. Maybe take some parts from different uh, car companies and work together with them to bring the cost down to create something like this in 2022. But anyway, that's my redesign of the Pontiac GTO. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.